Back on Metro Watch, Eric Sheptop joins me in studio. Uh, he's here to talk about some of the problems plaguing uh, not just the nation's capital, but the homeless community. Uh, Eric, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. So. Uh, oh, I'm doing well. Uh, perhaps you should take just a, a moment to tell our listeners who you are and what you do. I'm Eric Sheptock, and I've been advocating for DC's homeless for about five years now. So you are concerned about the mayor's proposal to do uh, not just cuts, but really severe cuts when it comes to the homeless population. Uh, what do you know? Well, they're going to cut. Well, I shouldn't say cut, but. There is a $20 million budget shortfall for homeless services for, for fiscal year 2012. And they're also cutting some, some other services. They're cutting IDA completely. Uh, they're, they're taking $18 million from the Housing Production Trust Fund. And they're, they're cutting other services as well. And so it's not just the homeless who are going to suffer, but also low-income residents who, who are not yet homeless. And, and presently, we have families that are being denied shelter. And uh, th there was a woman who had a baby on February 10th, and for the whole first month of the baby's life, uh, she and the baby were homeless, sleeping in the Greyhound station and sleeping in the stairwell of an apartment complex that has no security guards. And, and so the way she got put in the shelter was she went before Councilman Jim Graham and told her story, and, and he threw his power around and got her put into the shelter, but she was one of the last ones to get put into the family shelter and families are now being turned away, even with small children. When I say families, it means they have at least one child with them, and they're being turned away sleeping in cars and, and parks and so forth. So the, 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 the picture for the homeless population and just about people, working people in the District of Columbia continues to be dismal when it comes to the budget. Yes, and, and actually uh, the, the doomsday date is April 1st of, of 2012 uh, because, see, the fiscal year begins on October 1st, but then hypothermia season begins November 1st, runs through March, and by D.C. law, they have to shelter you during hypothermia. But as of April 1st, if it's not freezing, then their obligation to shelter people is over, and uh, they've been sheltering people throughout the year, but because of budget cuts, they're saying they're going to do the bare minimum, and so they're going to shut shelters down on April 1st of 2012, and you're going to have thousands of people going to the streets that are presently in shelter right now. D.C. has 6,546 6, homeless people as of January of this year, and, and uh, I'm sure it's increased a little bit since then. But even so, uh, thousands of them are going to be sleeping in the streets. You're going to have mentally ill people that are just sleeping outside and doing all kinds of crazy things. And uh, it's going to be very unsafe you know, for, for people. And uh, if you think it's bad now, multiply it by 10. I mean, we already have folks sleeping outside. But, but then uh, also, we are doing something about it because the, the homeless have begun to organize and uh, we're meeting down at CCNV, the, the Community for Creating Nonviolence, a shelter that's been known for, for its direct actions in the past. That's how it was begun, was through direct action. And uh, so I want to invite people to come out on the 16th, this coming Monday, and I, I hope to get thousands of people out there. We're, we're going to have a, a march on the 18th, which is next Wednesday, a week from today. And so on Monday, the 16th, we're going to be organizing that march. And on the 18th, we're going to march from CCNV at 425 2nd Street Northwest. We're going to march about a mile down to the City Hall, to the Wilson Building. And we want to send out a very strong message that, that we need to save social services. And it's also come out in the news, I, I heard it was said here yesterday, about how that the high income earners are actually willing to pay additional taxes in order to keep people off the streets. And so we need some of those high income earners to actually join this fight and to come out and talk to the council because the council is using them as a reason not to uh, raise taxes. But if, if they don't mind having taxes raised, they need to come to the council and say, save the social services, raise, raise our taxes, we'll help the poor through increased taxes. But I want to get everyone out there on the 16th, on this coming Monday, to organize with us and, and to, and to uh, join forces with the homeless and the homeless advocates and to send out a very strong message because if we don't do that now, on April 1st of 2012, you're going to have hundreds and thousands of people out there just, you know, in the streets and, and uh, it's going to be really chaotic and so just kind of imagine yourself having somebody homeless sleeping on your front doorstep. Uh, it sounds so Reagan-esque. In, in the 1980s when Ronald Reagan came to town, 
and emptied all the institutions and put everybody out on the street. That was the first time people saw homelessness in all its stark reality. And now it's sounding once again that, that it's, this is deja vu all over again. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's regrettable. I, I did a story earlier about um, uh, one of the, the, the committees, the subcommittees on Capitol Hill that oversees the district budget asking today, Kwame Brown and Vincent Bray, the mayor and the chair of the council, will appear before that subcommittee to, to tell them how they're spending the city's money. And so you have, here you have Capitol Hill on the one side telling the, the people who live in D.C., well, we're going to see, we're going to have a say in how you spend your money. And on the other hand, you have uh, our local government um, having to do some of the things that uh, at, at best are unpalatable when it comes to the poor and, 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 and the homeless in this city. So citizens are caught between a rock and a hard place. And um, you're right, if you think it's, it's bad now, if, if all those cuts are made, and how many, how many uh, homeless shelters are they planning to, 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 um, well, the, to, sh to close? Uh, the, the important number is not how many shelters, but how many beds. How many beds, okay. And so we're, we're going to lose at least 1,300 beds. And I want to also add in that the federal government is cutting back on HUD by about $5.3 billion, and we're going to lose about 750,000 units of HUD housing across the country. And here in D.C., we have 11,000 HUD vouchers, and we might lose 5,000 HUD vouchers, and, and that's about 12,000 people because you have families in, in, in the uh, HUD housing. And so we might have 12,000 more homeless people come April 1st of next year uh, if the HUD housing gets scaled back. All right, R remind the, the listeners once again as to when the action is taking place, how they can join you, and all the pertinent information that go along with that. Okay, sure. Well, we're going to have our big meeting on this coming Monday, May 16th at, at CCMV. That's 425 Second Street Northwest. And, and then we're going to have the march on, on the 18th, which is a week from today on Wednesday. Uh, you can contact me by going online and, and you can go to Facebook or Twitter or for Eric Sheptock. That's E-R-I-C, last name, S-H-E-P-T-O-C-K. If you Google my name, you'll find everything you need. You'll find my Facebook, my Twitter, my email, everything. Your appearances so, on CNN and all the other and, places. And, and, and you've, you've been busy, Eric. Exactly. You've been really busy. And, and the, 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 the um, information you alluded to, with um, it was a poll conducted by the Fiscal Policy Institute, Ed Lazier's group, right. saying that the wealthy, uh, the people who make over $200,000, are willing to be taxed in order to pick up some of the burden here, right. so I'm not sure why um, why some of that are not being looked at. Right. So um, again, Eric, thank you for joining me in studio this morning, and I know you always are out there fighting in the trenches. Keep up the good work, and let me know what's happening. Thank you for having me. All right. Back in a moment. Please stay with us. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to. To lose my head <laughs> It's like a jungle sometimes It makes me wonder how I keep from going under <laughs> It's like a jungle sometimes It makes me wonder how I keep from going under <laughs>